Okay, next up is the grip, the grip on the pistol. And it is, it is huge. I, I can't stress the importance of, of the grip. I think it's the number one thing that most people could improve on, most pistol shooters. Um, it's where all your recoil control comes from. So to start off with, I'm going to start off with what the, the strong hand does. First off, contrary to what most people do, we don't want to grip the gun like, like a monkey grips a hammer. We're not gripping it like this. Okay, we're, what we're doing is pinching into the gun in this sort of motion. What that does is it drives the web of my hand up higher into the gun. And as I mentioned earlier, the higher we get, you know, the, the better everything is, the, the more recoil control we have. So as you can see, if I just grab the gun like a, like a monkey grabs a hammer, you can see the space between the, my hand and the slide, and we've got probably over a quarter of an inch there. Now I'm using my technique where I'm pinching into it and driving the web of my hand up into the gun. You can see I'm actually touching the slide. I mean, that quarter of an inch is, again, is huge. If you actually, in the, in the drill we'll do when I shoot, you'll see how much difference it makes in the, in the muzzle flip. What that also does when you look at the other side of my hand is it brings my thumb up. Since I'm, I'm doing the pinch grip, it brings my thumb up out of the way and leaves room for my support hand. I'm gripping it like a monkey, my thumb's down here. Now onto the support hand. The support hand, this is where the vast majority of your recoil control comes from. You're going to be using more strength in this hand because if you use too much strength with the strong hand, you still have to manipulate the trigger. And you'll, just, you'll lose the agility in your, in your trigger finger if you overstress the strong hand. So onto the weak hand, the actual position of the weak hand on the gun, and as you can, th this is mine. As you can see, it's very high. If I take my strong hand off of the gun and you're just looking at the weak hand, I've got it so high that the top of my, the back of my thumb here is higher than the bottom of the slide. And the way I look at it is the bullet comes out of the barrel right here. The closer we can get to this point with either hand, the more control we have over the gun. It's just, you know, the better you're going to manage the recoil and everything else. So my grip is like this, and if you also look fr from this side, I'm not, I'm not stacked up right here. My, my finger is not touching, my index finger here is not touching my, my middle finger. I'm clear out here. Again, it just gets me higher and further out on the gun. Okay, so when you actually look at, look at my weak hand, again, it's, it's along the frame of the pistol. My upper palm area right in here, this is what's touching the gun. Right up in here. I'm not, my, if my thumb was down, what you don't want is you don't want your weak hand riding on your thumb. Because again, you're, you're, you're gaining more distance away from the gun and you're losing control of the gun. So the thumbs up, you're right in here like this. All my torque, all my momentum is right up in here. A lot of people, they'll do this. They'll have the technique right with the thumbs forward grip like this, but they'll grip further down on the heel of their hand, and they'll, they'll have a space in their gun just like this. You want, the, you want the high and tight up in there like that. Now, the actual pressure that I'm using here is in with both hands. So my right hand is torquing this way. My left hand is countering that and torquing that way. So what that does is it really locks it in there. The gun in recoil obviously comes back. What we don't want to do is help it back. The, the older technique, more the, the Weaver style shooting that was, was popular in the 1980s, more the, the push-pull method. I don't believe in pulling, that was the method of pushing with this hand, pulling with this hand to, to steady the gun. And, and it may somewhat steady the gun, but when you're pulling with this hand, the gun's already coming back. Why do you want to help it back in recoil? I mean, it's just, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. So all my momentum is forward, I'm torquing in with both hands. And again, I'm just, I'm locked out here, really, really solid. And I, I can pull the trigger as fast as I can, and you're going to see this gun, it's not going to move a whole lot. It's going to be tracking back and forth. And what we do, we're shooting, you know, for accuracy and speed, both, that, you know, that's what we're looking for, is, is control of the gun. That's, that's paramount. Okay, one other thing I, I do want to mention, I know I've, I've, talk, I've been talking a lot about getting very high on the gun, and with, with my pinch grip, I'm, I'm touching the gun. One thing it has to be very clear is that everybody's hands are different. My hands happen to fit this particular gun and they happen to work really well. Guys with meatier hands, and I get questions a lot, they'll say, well, you know, the slide really cuts me. You know, it, one gun doesn't fit all. So w with me, I actually do get cut right along the side on the base of my, my trigger finger here. Um, but it's not, nothing substantial. So I, I want to be high. Obviously, if, if it's barely cutting me, 
with, with my shooting technique, I know that I'm doing the right thing, but it's, it's not going to work for everybody. I've seen some guys really get filleted back here with, with meteor hands. And if you, shoot, if you shoot a production division gun like this, there's not much you can do to counter that. If you shoot a Glock in, in a limited division, or if you carry it on your own, then you're free for some modifications. And there are some modifications you can do to the beaver tail, build it up right in here, that will actually uh, combat that, that cutting of the hand. So th that is one way to, to get out of it if you're really wanting to, to use a Glock and you got a, a meteor hand and it's, and it's cutting you. Okay, I just talked about the grip. And what I'm going to do here to demonstrate, I've got two targets down range at 10 yards. And I'm going to shoot six shots on each. First six shots on the one target, I'm going to shoot with a bad grip. Second shot, or the second target, I'm going to shoot with a good grip. I'm going to shoot them about the same speed, you know, about as fast as I can pull the trigger. And uh, we'll go down and look at the targets. Uh, also take note of the actual gun when I'm shooting and, and watch it in recoil. So here's the first target. <clears throat> You have to forcibly do this. I'm going to have a low grip, grip it like a monkey, and have my hand all the way down at the bottom on the first target here. Six shots. Okay. Now the second target, I'm going to have my proper grip, and uh, we'll see what happens. Okay. Let's go look at the targets. Okay, here's the targets. Uh, first off, I fired seven shots accidentally on this first target. I'm going to blame that because I shot intentionally with a bad grip and uh, I almost never do that, so that's going to be my excuse for that. Um, but obviously, a huge difference. I mean, I'm all over the place on this target. If you watch my gun, I I'm sure it's flying all over the place. Um, in my proper grip, you know, I'm solid, I'm locked out. They're just coming back in the same place every time. That gun is just tracking perfectly. You know, I mean, it, 10 times better and that's that's the difference